greenhouse door is getting its paint job. It's actually log oil. There's a sliding plexiglass window will uh, be in there. Came out awesome. This is the inside. How you doing everybody? Uh, Randy Richard in the shop. And this is the door to the greenhouse. I built this right before the fire. So, uh, would have been a shame losing everything. I lost the door in the greenhouse. I lost the greenhouse too. Uh, anyway, this is the inside of the, the greenhouse door. And I put in these little sliding plexiglass pieces. Uh, she wanted a window of some sort. So this is what I came up with for now. Uh, just so it's something you can see out. But this is the inside. And I'll turn around. This is the outside. Right there. Uh, it come back just a motif of the siding a bit. It doesn't, it's not lap, but uh, I made it out of the same stuff the siding is uh, and everything. So, but what we need to do right now is I need to at least get hinges on it and then I'm going to make up some type of doorknob latch thing or something. But today it's, today it's about the hinges. All right, this is the, these are the hinges. And what I did is I designed them in Fusion and we cut these pieces out on the plasma table. Uh, we have a Langmuir, when I say we, my son and I, we bought a Langmuir XR 4x8 uh, plasma table. We have it set up at his place and uh, we're doing some projects on it and uh, making some signs he's made and things like that. Uh, the plan is that he wants to make some money with it, so I, I get the benefit of that a little bit. So, uh, anyway, so these are just plasma cut. And this side here, this piece, will be the flange piece for the outside. The hinge will be on the inside, and this will sandwich between the door, and uh, so it looks nice on the outside. And then I have here is this was a piece of steel tubing I have. It was a handle for a uh, like a air pump pickup little crane thing. <laughs> anyway, I took the handle and I've reamed this out to half inch to get rid of the weld seam. And then I'm going to make some pins. And we'll cut this up so that we have a one inch piece and a one inch piece here, then the then the, this piece in the center. So that, that will be welded in, like so, and this will be on the inside as the hinge. I bought from, a, this was actually a good website, uh, blacksmithbolts.com. And they sell all sorts of uh, plain steel, basically, uh, but they have square-headed square, square -headed bolts. Best price I found, and, and, and great selection of uh square type head type uh, bolts and lag screws and things like that uh, for you know you in blacksmithing and blacksmith projects you use a lot of this kind of thing so but excellent website and excellent price I'll put a link in the description but anyway so I bought some uh, these are quarter 20 and they'll go on there like so with a square knot on other side actually I'll put the head of the bolt on the outside and the nut on the inside but that look really nice on there and then on this side it will be into wood framing and I bought these uh, diamond point squares uh, tw number 12 screws and we'll put those on here put four of those on there I think that will look uh, will, will look really good and match the motif of the greenhouse so that's the plan so we're going to get these reamed out so they're all the same size, uh, reaming them half inch and we'll get those done and then we'll cut them up and I'll make the pins. I know the length of the pin will be already so I'll make the pins and then we'll do a little work to these. I'm going to do a little artistic work to these. Uh, I think I'm going to chisel some lines in and make it look more like a leaf type thing on here um, and we'll do that to the inside and outside so I have six of these to do and uh, we'll heat them up in the forge I'll probably cold mark it and then 
and then heat them in the forge and deepen them and accent it a little bit. And then we'll do some uh, welding and put them to put the hinges together. This is a half inch reamer. Does a pretty nice job and it brings it to size, makes it easy. I turn a half inch pin and it's it should be just right. So I just faced it off so it's a nice clean look on it. I don't want to have a hole in it anyway. I'm going to pull it out here about two and a quarter inches. Now the material is a little warm, so we'll just measure it. We're 5 point, 0 0.5005. It'll cool down to probably be at least a half smaller uh, or so. Okay, I'm a little about five thousandths large, but that's okay. So, because this is what I'm going to do. This is a, a Dyna braid power file. Now, there's a lot of other. You can buy it cheaper than this one. Uh, this one's three hundred, little over three hundred dollars. This one. This one is a little over $300. Uh, they're very well made though. And uh, I, you know, I do a lot of stuff and I do a lot of machining. And, and uh, so I spent the money on a good one. And, uh, but it's awesome. Now I'm rotating it in the opposite direction. Now we're gonna clean this up a little bit. Then we're going to take our tube for this one. That's pretty, that's pretty tight up on that end. It's a little hot still. Last little bit will be a little snugger. That's good.
So here's the tools I used uh, for this. This is a WNMG insert, 321 size, so it has a nice small radi tip radius. What is that, uh, 32 thousandths or something, tip radius. Deepest cut I usually make with these is right around 25 thousandths, um, and that works really well. Very accurate cut. Parting tool I used. Uh, this one is an insert tool, 90 thousandths wide uh, parting tool. This one has a neutral rake on the insert. Uh, works exceptionally well. Uh, we're using chrome molly, all steels. Um, shoot. Just about anything you want. Um, stainless, all that. Chamfer tool I used. This is one I designed up myself and uh, I use a square insert on it. This is a, a two size insert, a quarter quarter inch uh, IC. Uh, and you can also face with it. It has a nice, it has a, about a, a number two uh, uh, radius on the tip there. So uh, that works really well for facing and chamfer. 40, this is a 45 degree chamfer. All right, we're going to uh, detail the the end here and touch off there and make that our zero point. There's all three. They all uh, came out pretty good. Except I went a little too far on this one, so the shoulder's not as tall. But other than that, the the rest of the details are pretty good. Uh, I sanded a little bit too much on that one edge and kind of softened it a bit. But I'm going to end up bluing these uh, also, so they're dark. And yeah, they'll look pretty good. These will be the pin. Let's, let's see here. You know, they'll go in, and if I knock it in tight, i got to knock it out. But, yeah, they'll go in like that. That part will be a little tight and perfect. Well, this is what the uh, hinges will look like. I've taken these, all these pieces, and I've just cold chiseled a pattern in. I'm going to heat these up and deepen those and... Make them look a little more forged. And this is the uh, pin pieces, you know, the, and pivot. So these two pieces, the smaller pieces will be welded here and here. And this piece will be welded to that piece. And they'll be basically like that. And then this will be welded on there. So I have all three of them all set up to how they're going to kind of be just making sure everything's right and uh, I think this is going to be really really nice I blued the pins yeah I, I blued those up just with a cold blue solution um, I like that brownell stuff and uh, comes out really nice 
So we'll do that first. Uh, next step will be, I'm gonna heat these up and work these over. These are all chiseled uh, leaf type of pattern in them. components are done. Uh, I think the forging idea was an excellent idea and these came out just awesome. Eh, I guess screwed up a little bit there but you know they look like a leaf and got a little shape to them and these will all get welded and these are the th these plates like I said are on the outside of the door you know sandwiched between those two and we're gonna paint now I'm gonna paint all these all this black We'll get them welded up, and then we'll paint them all. All right, I didn't film putting these together. I had the phones ringing off the hook. Totally forgot about filming. Just wanted to get this done. Uh, pretty, pretty simple. This was one all put together, and I try and change my plan. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna mortise this in to the door jam and use flathead screws. Uh, we decided it might be a, look a little better. Um, so I countersunk. Those holes have found some screws, screws, and uh, we'll do that. So, setting setting these on to your tubes here uh, of the pivot. Um, you want this surface to be at the center line of your pivot. So I needed three sixteenths offset to do that. So I had put my three sixteenths uh, fireball tool blocks underneath there and set this all up here pinned together with a half inch sacrificial pin I put in there to hold all the tubes in alignment together and I TIG brazed uh, 
this these portions to this plate both sides okay then I took this disassembly and attached this plate now the offset on this because this door hit sits on here and uh, for this for this to be so this side of the door was even with the back of the jam uh, I needed a half inch offset from this side so I put the half inch blocks on underneath there set this up on there tight and square against there and TIG brazed that in and then just a couple little brazes on this side to give it a little bit more uh, shear strength there it doesn't need much I did not have to weld that all the way so that's how I did it and then I knocked out the pin then I took them individually the pins knocked out I ran the reamer through them okay so that they're nice but these fit absolutely perfect in here by doing the way I did it didn't have to do anything adjustment wise and uh, reaming them out makes it nice and you know square if they got a little deformed or anything and then the the, the, the the proper pin, which will be oops, like this, like that, and that would be the top, and this pin will go in there like so. All right. As soon as I get it lined back up, and the pin will go in like so, and I can push it most of the way, and I'll have to probably tap it, tap it down through. So that's going to be just awesome. And now we're going to just clean them up and give them a paint job. I think these, these are going to just uh, be very, very awesome looking hinges. And then, on, and then our backing plate will be on the other side of the door and look awesome also. All right, they're all painted uh, flat black. Uh, came out pretty good. I'm not a painter, but I can do a rattle can sometimes. <laughs> so they're ready to go to go together, and uh, I'm already fitting one over there on the door. We'll go over and take a look at that. All right, this is the uh, top hinge on the door, and we've got this set over so we have about an eighth of an inch so we have an eighth inch gap oh, we're using this here in there uh, so when the door closes there'll be a, a small gap so you don't bind your door and uh getting it in a position where it's gonna f the other side plate is going to be on the board that's on the other on the front side and we're going to uh, get these bolted on We'll do all three, and then we'll show you what it looks like. The hinges are all in place on the door. Now the pins aren't pounded in, because we'll probably be taking them out and getting everything fitted to the jam. But all three of them are in. Looks super nice. Really happy with how all this is coming out. Uh, this is the outside of the door before we take it on down. Those hinges look awesome. Those are the outside plates. Marked out where the top hinge is going to sit. And I'm just going to mortise this out, eighth of an inch deep. and flush and the correct distance from the top to the center of that hole
two inches and looking really good now for the bottom hinge and we should be really good and then uh, after the hinges are mounted of course then I'm put in door stop uh, that will control how far forward the door will come and then I'm going to design a latch mechanism and get that built but so far it's coming out really really good the door will open you know all the way in there okay it's done or mounted they're nice and they're a little bit stiff but that's okay they'll loosen in time just awesome door stops are next and then a latch it's gonna stop right there and we have our little windows that are being difficult, but chips are done. There we go. All right, this is the inside with the doors closed, and you can see the hinges. I think this is going to work. Looks beautiful, in my opinion. There the door stops are in. My hand's covering the white there too, so you can see that. There the door stop. That's that trim stuff right here. Goes around the door. I just put in all the door stops. That's this trim wood that goes around here. And now you don't see a gap and it helps seal for wind and such. But, and it matches real nice into these outside plates here uh, of where the hinge is on the other side and I end up with just a tiny gap here I wanted a little bit of clearance so they didn't hit so that came out pretty good it's about an eighth of an inch other than that it works awesome and uh, I think uh, it's gonna be a great little door next is the door latch and I'm designing that right now and we'll hopefully get that done here in, in a few days.